Hi everyone, it's Chanel from Hustling Hotties and host of the Big Dreamer series. I'm here today with Rosani Lou. Rosani, how are you? Good, Janelle, how are you doing? I'm wonderful, thank you so much for being here. Rosani, what is, tell, me, tell me about your business. My business is I am a nonfiction writer and speaker. So I, I write about the things that interest me and I speak about the things in the books. Uh, my first book I did with my daughter, How to Survive Elementary School. So mm -hmm. naturally, the built-in market right there is uh, parents with uh, children going through the ele elementary school. So we talk about issues that are new uh, for us that we didn't face 20, 30 years ago when we were coming up in elementary school and how families can best deal with these issues that are kind of new right now. Uh, my second book was my memoir. And in it, I kind of teach people how to live big and live out loud because I do what I do and it's worked for me. And I, and I share some funny things uh, and life lessons in there in my memoir. And my third book, which just came out is Badassery 101, uh, 10 Secrets to Be the Confident Boss of Your Life. So with that book and with my speaking engagements, I share with people on um, the 10 strategies with which they can live confidently so they can pursue the dreams and goals that they really want in life. Wow, I think that for most people, it's a dream to be a writer and a speaker. What, and I know it was, it's, it's for me, and I've written a couple books, but definitely not my full-time gig. For you, it's your full-time gig. So I love that. What strategies did you use to do this, be able to live this lifestyle? And you have a beautiful background back there. So it look, looks okay. like you're living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on vacation this week in Hawaii. Nice. So, yeah, it is kind of like paradise here, yeah. and I love it. Uh, my strategies are I, I observe uh, the good role models in my life. So when I started uh, writing, and I wasn't sure how to publish. I knew how to write. Uh, I've written uh, most of my life, but I didn't know how to publish. So my strategy was, well, there are lots of other people who publish. They either went through traditional publishers or they published themselves or they went hybrid where they found a publisher and they kind of had some control over the process. Mm -hmm. So I found these role models by going to seminars and webinars and reading books on this topic and realized, okay, there, there are some people I can observe and keep observing on how they did it. How did they get a traditional publisher or how did they self publish? And I just kind of follow them on their journey and went to the webinars and seminars in order to a create a, a plan for how I can publish my own books. So uh, my first strategy is to really look at the people that you want, whose thing you want to have, that you want to model after, and observe on what they do and figure out what, what are they doing that could work for you. And that's basically what I did to publish my first three books. I love that. That's great. Yes. Um, it's so many people want to reinvent the wheel and if the wheel is spinning, there's no point in reinventing it. Just go after what everybody else is doing and there's enough money and enough market for everybody out there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what is one outrageous goal that you've accomplished so far? I, I actually have a couple. Uh, they both happened last year. <laughs> uh, one was I uh, published uh, my first two books at the same time on the same date uh, mm. on the same day as helping my mother move like physically move from one city to another on the same day my books came out and then through my fan base and the help of a lot of people I uh, delivered those two books to best-selling status on the same day as their release and at the same time as helping my mother move <laughs> oh, <laughs> so my crazy day. March 31st 2017 well live in uh, infamy and awesomeness <laughs> uh, forever <laughs> yeah forever forever march 31st so that was um a pretty big thing for me last year and uh, last october i also climbed uh, most of kilimanjaro i climbed kilimanjaro is the highest mountain in africa it's 19,341 mm -hmm. feet and i climbed to the 18,300 uh, feet point before frostbite was setting in and I decided to turn back at that point. But that's been my highest climb so far. And I barely started hiking a year, a year and a quarter ago. 
So I, I couldn't do it. I, I just, I just know I physically could not do it. I don't have the mental capacity to do it. So <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. I will, I will try again because my goal is to get to the very top. So maybe next year I will go back again and, and try to summit again. I heard that there's a lot of preparation for that, you know, just with the native people taking you up there, setting up the tour and all of that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. It's amazing. And I feel like that could be a book in itself, Janelle. It's, it's a porter story. Like we hear all about hikers and their amazing uh, accomplishments, right? But I really think the porters themselves, the African porters, mm -hmm. in Kenya and Tanzania, there's a big story in how they live and why they choose to do what they do and, and the hardships they've had to overcome to be lifelong porters. This is their career. And I feel like there's, there's got to be a book in there somewhere as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Because just thinking about it, they've already reached the peak so many times because they've taken so many people. So yeah. they've gone up. That's amazing. I never even thought about that before. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Like my, my porter, well, we have several porters, but my, my main guy, uh, Frank, he's a uh, Tanzanian. I think he was only 32 years old. And, mm -hmm. but he's been doing this since he was 16. Wow. So he's been, he started training as an apprentice porter since he was 16. So he's been doing this for, you know, 16 years. This is his life. And he summited so many times. And I just feel like it's such a phenomenal story that the porters themselves have. I'll be reading it when you write it. So yeah. let me know when it comes out. Yeah. <laughs> I already can tell you're going to write it. <laughs> so what would you tell, with all that you've accomplished already, Rosani, what would you tell your 15-year-old you? I would tell my 15-year-old me to just be patient and work hard. Because 15-year-old uh, me was a very impatient as a lot of uh, millennials today are as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the 15 year old me and the millennials today, they want everything now because everything's available at the click of a button and, and you can express yourself at the click of a button. So we have a, uh, this built in impatience about this um, today that we, we really should be more patient with, um, with our journey because no success happens overnight. So that's what I would tell my 15 year old self and today's millennials that do you uh, do the path, work hard, but be patient because what you really want isn't going to transform itself. It isn't going to happen overnight, uh, but you do need to put in the time uh, to get what you want. Definitely. That's great advice. Um, and on that same account, what would you tell a budding entrepreneur or someone that just doesn't have the level of success? that you have, what advice would you give them? I would say, do, do the hard stuff. Don't be afraid to do the hard stuff. And there are so many experts and uh, avenues of help out there that we just have to open ourselves to the help, to the expertise. And that kind of goes back to uh, my first tip, which is observe the right role model, see what they're doing that's, that seems to be working for them. And and create a path on your own by doing uh, what's worked for them. So uh, really observe the role models and then put in the time. And nothing happens overnight, but if we reverse engineer it and chunk it down and tell ourselves, what can we do today? What can we do tomorrow to move forward? And that's what we have to do. And um, so that those would be my tips for a budding entrepreneur is A, observe the right mo role models, and B, chunk it down and reverse engineer and tell yourself, what can I do today, tomorrow, next week to move myself forward while I'm observing the role models? I love that. That's great advice. Definitely. Um, so who is somebody that you would say has helped you to get to the position that you are in right now? Well, if you could pick one person, who would it be? Ooh. That's hard because I admire so many writers and speakers. Uh, hmm. It's hard to pick one, but I would say all the nonfiction writers like myself and speakers out there who speak about their nonfiction books, they have been my role models uh, mm -hmm. for a while. And I, I put all of them on a pedestal, so I weigh them equally valuable. But I observe on what they do 
and and how they do it. So I. I would put all the nonfiction role models uh, or writers and speakers out there, like uh, Lewis Howell, like uh, Mel Robbins of the Five mm. Second Rule, like uh, Marie Fol Forleo, who's a really strong businesswoman. Um, so, so many, yeah, I just, uh, there's it's so many, too many to name. So uh, basically I group them all in the, in the category of nonfiction writers and speakers who speak about what they write. I love it. I love it. Um, so my next question for you is, and I haven't really asked this on that many interviews, but what's the end goal for you? What's the ultimate dream for you? My ultimate dream is uh, what, that I'm so big, people just seek me out to speak about what I write, that they just come and find me in order to impact their audience because they know my, my books on this topic or my speaking on this topic will bring so much value to their audience. So that when they think about confidence, they, they know to uh, Google Rosani Lou and find me and to ask me to come and speak to them. Or when they think about how to live a big life and, and live the life that they want, they know to Google my name and come and ask me to speak. So that, that's my dream goal right now. Love it, love it. Um, so as a writer, you I'm sure you've read so many books. What is that one book, though, that has been totally life-changing for you? It's your must-read book. You know, I there's been so many, but I'll tell you the one I just finished is, uh, you know, the writer-producer of Grey's Anatomy and, uh, um, okay. and uh, what's that show with uh, Olivia Pope? Scandal. Yes, so I just finished her year of yes, yes. I read it too, yes. Right, it's amazing, yes, right? It was, it was really good. I love it. I've highlighted so many amazing quotes and parts from the book. I'm like, yes, when she wrote that, those sections, I'm like, yes. That's like, that, I totally resonate with so many things she said, like about yeah. getting rid of toxic people in your life. It's like when you're successful, all of a sudden, these toxic people start showing themselves uh, to form. And we mm -hmm. realize, oh crap, you're not for me at all. You're not part of my tribe at all. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to know, be strong enough. We have to be badass enough to get rid of them. And, and two, it's just saying yes to opportunities, to plowing through that fear. It's another great quote is, whatever you're afraid of, whatever you're fearful of, like I was with Kilimanjaro, that means we have to do it. It's a universe telling us, oh, Janelle, Oh, Rosani, you've got to do that because you're afraid of it. Because the universe is trying to teach us a lesson. It's time to overcome that fear. And what Shonda did in her book and telling about how she overcame so many fears, like public speaking, even mm -hmm. though she's such a successful TV writer, she did not want to be you know, public speaking for the life of her, but she overcame that so many times in that one year. Yeah. I, I, I just love that book so much. Just saying yes to yourself by saying yes to opportunities. I use it against my boyfriend. I'm like, he says no so much. I'm like, let's make this your year of yes. You're going to say yeah. yes for everything I want. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. You just throw him on a year of yes. Yes. I everything it. I want, you say yes. <laughs> yes. Just say yes. Even, you know what? Start out with one week. Start out with one week. Like, tell your boyfriend, give me a one week of yes. Give That's me one a good week idea. of yes. I think least, with him, I've got to start with a day of yes. Forget a week. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One day of yes, man. One day of yes. <laughs> do it. You know, so, sometimes, no, sometimes go ahead. I with my, uh, sometimes I do that with my kids. And I say no to my kids a lot because I'm the disciplinarian parent mm -hmm. of between my husband and I. I'm more of the disciplinary. But once in a while, I'll just you know, bring out a day of yes for my kids, whatever they want, I say yes to. And there, it's like an amazing day, right? And it's like unusual. But when you say yes to yourself and, and yes to opportunities, your life really changes. So yes, get your boyfriend on that one day of yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goal. And speaking of opportunities, I've noticed for myself, just you have to, when things are presented to you, just acting on that presentation immediately so something yeah. like a lady at the grocery store the other day was a chef and she was giving me all this advice and spaghetti aisle 
about the good pastas to use. And I said, why didn't I get her phone number? She's a chef in my area and she's in the grocery store talking to me and giving me advice. So just even small opportunities like that to connect with people and just take advantage of what's available to us. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Because you never know where that connection could lead to. You know, we don't know how big or awesome a uh, thing could be right around the corner just by getting their business card or just saying, hey, nice to meet you the other day. Thanks so much for your advice about the pasta and spaghetti sauce. I really learned a lot. You just never know, you know, like I'm on vacation right now in Hawaii, right? But you, you can bet your life I have my business cards on me and my husband has his business cards on him. Uh, with our businesses because you never know who we're going to meet at the beach or at the pool that we can have stronger connections with and that could come with just chatting and exchanging business cards exactly there's opportunities everywhere we go so we have to be ready to be able to accept it I, this guy told me he says i carry my passport with me because i stay on go i'm always ready at any point in time i could fly anywhere in the world and it's so true I love it. I, I love it. I, I, that's phenomenal that he carries his passport with him. That's, that's a total yes, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying yes to the extreme level. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Rosani, what is your favorite quote? My favorite quote is, and it's something I put in, in my book, Bad Astro 101, is a quote from Henry Ford, the inventor of uh, the Ford automobiles. It's uh, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all in your we head. Create, we create our own reality. Mm -hmm. You know, you wanna be negative and you wanna play the victim and you wanna self-criticize, then that's the bubble you live in. But if you wanna get out of that self-victimization, if, if you believe you can do it and that you're gonna move forward, then that's what you're gonna do. So we create our own reality. Yeah, it's true. It's really true. So uh, Rosani, I do appreciate you taking your time with me today. Where can we get more information about you, your books, anything that you want to share with our viewers, please tell us where can we get in contact with you? Awesome. My website is www.rosani.com. It's spelled R-O-S-E-A-N-N-E-Y.com. And I'd love to offer our audience a free chapter from my book, Badass Through 101. And I think Janelle has a way of sharing that link. Yeah, that you guys so just scroll down. It's going to be at the bottom of the page here. Just click it right under the, um, the video that you guys are watching and you'll be able to get that free chapter from, from Rosani. Yeah, free chapter. <laughs> and the, the first chapter is about how to figure out to do the hard shit. Because, uh, you know, that's, that's going to boost our confidence so much when we actually do the hard shit that we really want to do, but we don't know even how to get started. So in that chapter, I talk in depth about how do you even get started to do the hard shit in life in order to boost your confidence. So that's the free first uh, free chapter. And then everybody can find all of my books on Amazon. Love it. Perfect. Rosani, thank you so much for taking the time out of your lovely looking vacation to be here with me today. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on your show, Janelle. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's no problem at all. Enjoy the rest of your trip. Thank you.